it's been quite funny to hear some of the things that have come out about him ducking or running and all this sort of stuff. It's just, as most people I think who know him, that's just not in his makeup. This is Jonathan Agger, fifth row boxing fans, joined by Tom Grant, lawyer of uh, Josh Taylor, here in Edinburgh for the first press conference for the rematch uh, with Jack Hatch, who goes down April 27th. Uh, Tom, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, tell us about uh, you know when you first uh, started working with Josh, and uh, you know I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing this is your first press conference, right? First time top table, yeah. Uh, worked with Josh for a while um, since before we fought Pro Grey. Um, then we sort of lost touch a couple of years and then started helping him again um, just before he did his defence against Jack um, and yeah that's that's it really So in terms of uh, how today went we obviously had Sam Jones up there uh, in Catchell's corner was it when you heard that you were like listen I've got to get up there and defend my man or? No not really they just said like you're up there so I think the guys at Matchroom and, and Top Rank know Sam and I have put a lot of work into getting it to this point and um, yeah it was just one of them where they said well, you're up and yeah, no problem. I'll I'll talk to anyone. So obviously, it's taken uh, two years to get this rematch on. Uh, in your opinion, why is it taken so long? There's a lot of reasons. Um, like I said on the stage, you know, I went to see Jack pretty quickly after the first fight. Josh told me to go and see him. Drove over to Chorley and said, "Look, we, we feel it's the right thing to do. Try and make a rematch." Um, Jack had some promotional issues, I think, to work through. That took its time. Then signed with Boxer. We then made the rematch, and then act of God, you know, Josh got injured, a pretty nasty plantar fascia. Uh, that date got pushed off, and the next thing we know, that you know, Jack's taking another fight, and um, and Josh was mandated to fight Tio, and within a very short period of time. You know, there's there's the time eating up really. So when it came back around in October last year that this was on the cards, that's when we all went to work. And from our perspective, it was just a case of waiting for Jack to get his affairs in order and then make the fight. You kind of name dropped Ben Shalom in there saying, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said he did more than Sam Jones did. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, it was a bit tongue in cheek, but um, obviously Dazo made no secret of the fact that they didn't necessarily see this fight landing with them in early January. Um, I think Sam went and explored doing it with another broadcaster and which you know Ben and, and Boxer stepped in and said that they would look at doing it and um, did quite a lot of good work to bring the parties closer together um, and then yeah at that point obviously the fight went back to the zone and the zone said they wanted to do it and Matchroom were obviously keen to deliver it as well for Jack so that, that was what I meant really. Uh, Sam basically said it was a nightmare getting this over the line uh, he said Josh had a number of things that he wanted uh, I think he said 22 foot ring he didn't want it in uh, I can't remember exactly what he said but uh, yeah. yeah. So what was uh, the no negotiations there like? It wasn't really a long list of demands, if I'm brutally honest. Um, in terms of the venue, that was just something that Josh was really keen to, you know, a lot of his fans paid a lot of money to go and see him in New York, and London is an expensive night out, and he was just really conscious that this is a domestic fight, and he wants to give something back to his fans, and he was just really clear, and he said, look, Tom, I just wanted to make sure it's in, in a place that's accessible, and, you know, not going to cost my fans the absolute earth to come and watch me fight, and Leeds was one venue we looked at Liverpool Newcastle um, but such was the passage of time that really um, it landed in Leeds by default in the end so and uh, you know going into the fight uh, from behind the scenes what, what have you seen from Josh uh, in terms of because people sort of suggest like he doesn't want the fight and things like that or certainly their side say that so when has he always wanted the fight or was it you know this made the most sense right now uh, no he's always wanted the fight I mean like I said on, on the stage he sent me to go and see Jack pretty quickly after the first fight to explore doing it so I just think you know Josh has had to sort of bite his tongue for a long period of time while everyone's been saying he's been running from a fight you, you don't get to the level he's got to if you run from anyone or anything and as most people know just from his public perception he, he, it's just not in his makeup to run from anything if anything it's the opposite and almost like trying to hold him back sometimes so yeah it's been quite funny to hear some of the things that have come out about him ducking or running and all this sort of stuff it's just as most people I think who know him that's just not in his makeup so and then uh, I just spoke to Eddie Hearn up there and I said uh, it's on the zone not pay-per-view and I said have the fighters had to take a, a cut or something like that and he said no the zone have just paid up for the fight so uh, in terms of uh, how this has worked how, how has this worked so that they're both getting what they want well I think Josh from Josh's perspective he's always been very clear about what number we're bringing to the table um, and ultimately the zone hit that number so 
that's all there is to it. And uh, just finally, uh, who else do you work with apart from Josh in boxing? And uh, yeah, just give us some names. Yeah, there's a couple of other fighters. Um, Sean Lazzarini, I've helped him on a couple of little things. Uh, he's one of Scotland's own Commonwealth champion. Uh, Malik Zanad, uh, I've helped him out on a few bits and pieces. And just been around boxing for a while. Um, but this is probably the first time where, like I said, I've put my head above the parapet and jumped on the top table next to the fighter. So I uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah. They, they all say, a lot of people say boxing is pretty difficult business behind the scenes. Uh, what, what's it like working behind the scenes in this sport? Is it is it tough at times? Um, well, we do quite a lot in football as well. So we look, look after a lot of football players, football agents. Um, parallels are, are there to see to be honest in terms of the contracts and the disputes and there's the mudslinging that goes on um, but it's all all good stuff and it's all enjoyable so okay well uh, Tom appreciate your time and uh, yeah look forward to the, this rematch uh, April 27th cheers mate